Hi, my name is Chris Brennan with theastrologyschool.com. The purpose of this video is to present my top six picks for the best beginner's books on astrology for people that are new to the subject. So this is kind of a new type of video, but I wanted to do it for those people who often ask me, what's the best astrology book to start out with if you're an absolute beginner to the subject and if you don't have any background whatsoever? And um, the answer is that there's a few different possible books that you could go with. So what I'm going to present is a list of my top six books if you're brand new to astrology. And most of these books really focus on introducing the basics of the fourfold system of Western astrology that consists of the planets, the signs of the zodiac, the concept of the 12 houses, and the concept known as aspects, which is relationships between planets. So each of these books covers that, those, that fourfold system in one way or another, but they tend to excel in one area or another, and that's why I wanted to present a, a series of different ones in order to give you some options uh, to figure out which one might be the most suitable for you. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so my first book on my list of the top six books is titled The Secret Language of Astrology, by Roy Gillette. So it's titled The Secret Language of Astrology, The Illustrated Key to Unlocking the Secrets of the Stars. And um, I this book actually just came out a few years ago, or came out, I guess it's several years ago now, around uh, 2011, I believe. And it was published by Watkins Books, and it's a relatively concise book. It's only about 160, 170 pages. But one of the things I like about it is that it's extremely... Uh, well illustrated. It's a very well put together book and a very beautiful book uh, in as far as astrology books go so that um, it does a really good job of illustrating and being sort of evocative in terms of the principles that it introduces. So it has a nice little section on the history of astrology at the very start of the book which I really appreciate because it does a good job of contextualizing the subject before jumping into the techniques. And then the majority of the book is actually spent focusing on trying to introduce the meanings of the planets that are used by astrologers, as well as the 12 signs of the zodiac. Um, eventually it does go into the houses and the concept of aspects, and it also has some relatively brief sections that give interpretations for different placements, which are, are pretty concise. Uh, but generally speaking, it's a very well il illustrated book. Um, they obviously put a lot of effort into it. And in terms of uh, sort of intro books, it's a very good uh, concise book if you're looking for something that's not going to take forever to read and is going to sort of pack a lot of information into it in a short uh, span of time. So that would be my first recommendation is Roy Gallet's book, uh, The Secret Language of Astrology. Uh, the second book that I would recommend in terms of intro astrology books is actually not quite an intro book, but it's uh, The Ephemeris. So the second recommendation that I would make for every new astrologer is to pick up a copy of an Ephemeris. And what an Ephemeris is, is it's actually basically just a book of tables that list planetary positions. So an Ephemeris will tell you uh, what uh, position each of the planets are in in the zodiac uh, for every day of the year. So everybody who's you know got some basic familiarity of us with astrology knows what their sun sign is, and that's basically where the sun was placed in the zodiac in a specific sign of the zodiac on the day you were born. But there's actually other planets in the solar system such as Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, etc. And each of those is going to be in a different sign of the zodiac on the day that you were born. So what the ephemeris does is it actually tells you what sign of the zodiac each of the planets are in on any given day in any given year in uh, whatever century you want to look at. So um, it also tells you what degree the planets are in within each of the zodiacal signs in order to, to make more minute distinctions about where the planets are placed and what their relationships are. And the ephemeris is generally just useful, and it's good that you start getting familiar with how to use it earlier in your studies, because the ephemeris will actually show you 
how the planets move and you'll be able to get a sense for how long it takes them to move through the signs of the zodiac. Um, you'll get a sense for the planetary cycles and how long it takes for a planet to make one complete uh, circuit around the zodiac. Uh, it shows retrograde periods. Uh, you can look up eclipses and other things with the ephemeris. It's a very useful tool to have both in natal astrology as well as predictive astrology. So I'd recommend checking it out. So in terms of, you can actually get the ephemeris either in print form or online. If you want to get just a free version, you can go to astro.com and pull up their 5,000 year ephemeris and they'll have an ephemeris for each year in PDF format. Um, for me, I've always preferred a print ephemeris and for that I usually use the American ephemeris, which is by Neil Mickelson and Rick Pottinger and it was published by ACS Publications. So there's different versions of the American Ephemeris. Um, you can get it for different year spans. So there's one for the 20th century, which is from 1900 to uh, the year 2000, and that's mainly useful if you want to look up where the planets were during different times in the past, over the past century. Uh, if you're looking for something more recent, then they have a smaller ephemeris that's from, I think, the years 2000 through 2050. Uh, they also came out with this really useful one called the Transcentury Edition Ephemeris not too long ago, which basically gives the years from 1950 to 2050, so it crosses in between those two centuries pretty well. Uh, there's also a distinction between whether you want to get have the ephemeris at noon or the ephemeris at midnight, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of where you want the day to start in terms of where the planetary positions are listed. Uh, you can go with either one and it's not going to make a huge difference. I think for the most part, most people go with midnight just to be safe. So that's my second recommendation. Uh, my third recommendation in terms of beginner astrology books is actually Parker's Astrology. So Parker's Astrology is a pretty relatively famous or well-known intro to astrology book that's published or written by Julia and Derek Parker. And it was originally published in 1991, but it's actually gone through several different versions or many different printings since that time because it became a pretty popular intro to astrology book over the past uh, 20, almost 30 years. And part of the reason for that, as you can see, is it's a pretty hefty book. Like, this is not uh, a light sort of astrology book that you read in, a, in an evening, but this is actually a 500-page sort of almost tome on astrology. And uh, the thing about this book compared to the, the first one I recommended is that it's much more comprehensive in that it tries to cover just about everything, so that it has at least some coverage of just about every major area of astrology. So that doesn't mean that it's going to be fully comprehensive or you'll never need another astrology book or something like that. But if you're looking for a single book that is as comprehensive as possible in terms of intro astrology books go, Parker's Astrology is probably your best bet. Um, Parker's Astrology is also, uh, like the first book, is extremely well illustrated. It has tons of diagrams and tables. Uh, the other thing that Parker's astrology really excels at is that it has tons of interpretations. So you can take your birth chart, which you can get for free from a site like astro.com, and you can look up uh, what the different placements in your birth chart mean in Parker's astrology, where it will tell you what Mercury in the 11th house means, or what Mars in Cancer means, or what have you. It'll actually go through and list, and some of the delineations are kind of long and others are kind of short, uh, but they try to include a, a ton of delineations in this book, and for that reason it's it's actually pretty useful as a sort of beginner's astrology book, because oftentimes one of the first things that you want to look up is what the different placements in your birth chart mean. So it's not going to have super, super long delineations, they're often pretty concise, and the delineations are not going to be as good as if you actually went to an astrologer and got your chart read by them, because then they'd be able to synthesize all the different placements, whereas this book will just present the placements in isolation without taking into account other ones. But that being said, it's a good um, all-in-one type book to get yourself sort of oriented with the topic and to have a good 
reference volume that can kind of sit on your desk and that you can refer back to over time. So there's a few different versions of this. The latest version that I have was published in, uh, I think it's like 2010 or 2011. Yeah, 2009 and 2010, they call it the new edition. So Parker's Astrology new edition, uh, whatever version you can find, just find whatever the most recent version it is, whatever the most recent version you can, and that'll probably be the best one uh, at the time. But even if you find an old one, one of the nice things about this book is that it's so popular and it was published by a major publisher that uh, it's relatively uh, easy to find for pretty cheap, especially through Amazon's, Amazon and other sites like that. All right, so that's my third recommendation. My fourth recommendation, and this might be a little, I don't want to say controversial, but I don't know, you wouldn't usually see it on a book of intro, a list of intro astrology books, but my fourth recommendation is Cosmos and Psyche by Richard Tarnas. So the title is Cosmos and Psyche, Intimations of a New World View, and it was published about 10 years ago in 2006. And the premise behind this book is it's actually um, a book that was written by a, a university professor who specializes in the humanities. And uh, Turnus actually became uh, semi-famous in the early 90s when he published a book titled The Passion of the Western Mind, which sort of traced the development of Western thought and Western philosophy over the course of the past few thousand years. And um, that book ended up on many reading lists for different universities because it was so well done. But then it turned out that that book was actually just a precursor to this other book that he was writing that he eventually completed uh, a decade and a half later called Cosmos and Psyche. And the big deal about Cosmos and Psyche is that Cosmos and Psyche was essentially uh, a college, a respected college professor who was writing a book where the basic premise was essentially what if astrology is is accurate or what if astrology is real. Uh, and, and not only that, it wasn't just raising the question, but he actually tried to, to the best of his abilities, make the case for astrology as a legitimate phenomenon. And what's interesting about it is he kind of approaches it in a roundabout way so that for the first 50 pages or so of the book, he doesn't actually mention the word astrology, uh, but instead he kind of builds up to it and sets the uh, scene, uh, sets the sort of stage as he's building up his argument to make the case for why astrology is a valid and legitimate phenomenon. So this is not an easy book to read. I, I, I have it on this list, though, because this is like a thinking person's astrology book, or if you're coming at this not from the perspective of, you know, trying to interpret your birth chart or trying to interpret other people's charts or look at relationship compatibility or something like that. If you're trying to approach astrology as like a serious intellectual discipline or you have uh, that sort of background in philosophy or metaphysics or the humanities or something like that, and you're curious to see a, a sort of more respectable presentation for astrology where um, uh, an actual sort of academic uh, person who has a background in philosophy and history, if they were to make the case for it, that's what you'll get with this book. So um, it does present in the second half of the book a bunch of natal, natal demonstrations, a bunch of examples of transits, and a bunch of um, different studies of outer planet cycles all with the purpose of demonstrating that astrology is a, is a legitimate phenomenon by showing it working both in the lives of individuals as well as the lives of people in world events and things like that through social movements and different things that happened uh, together or in concert with outer planet transits. Uh, but so, so this is essentially a intro to astrology book that was written for intellectuals and for academics. And so if you find yourself kind of more in that camp rather than in the camp of people that are just looking for interpretations of your birth chart, then you might find Cosmos and Psyche to be uh, a good introduction to the subject, uh, if, if that's the sort of perspective that you're coming from. So that is my fourth recommendation. Uh, my fifth recommendation for beginner's astrology books is titled On the Heavenly Spheres, 
uh, by Helena Avalar and Luis Ribeiro. So uh, the title is On the Heavenly Spheres, A Treatise on Traditional Astrology. So this book came out uh, a few years ago now in 2011, I believe. Let me double check that. Oh, 2010. So this book came out in 2010, and it was published by the American Federation of Astrologers. And um, it's actually a translation of a book that came out in, I believe, 2006 or 2007 that was originally published by this couple of astrologers from Portugal, and they originally wrote the book in Portuguese. And then this publication is actually a translation of that work that was written in Portuguese into English, and the translator was actually my friend uh, Maria Mateus. So this book um, is an introduction to traditional astrology, and the difference or the distinction is that uh, the other books that I have recommended up to this point primarily focus in modern astrology, uh, focus on modern astrology, which is the type of astrology that was sort of developed and perfected in the 20th century. So essentially, uh, the most recent forms of astrology that have developed in modern times. But uh, if you go back and you look at the history of astrology, it turns out that astrology prior to the 20th century was uh, oftentimes a lot different than the type of astrology that was practiced that is practiced today. So today, astrology tends to be more character oriented and more focused on um, psychology and the analysis of character and things like that. Whereas prior to modern times, astrology was a little bit more focused on prediction and the timing of events. Uh, there's also some differences in terms of the technical apparatus of traditional astrology utilized some techniques that were lost and not transmitted to modern times. And it's only recently in the past two or three decades that some astrologers have decided to go back and look at uh, and, and do translations of ancient texts from Greek and Latin and other languages, and then to recover some of the older astrological techniques contained in those texts. So what's awesome about this book is this is actually one of the very first um, books in modern times that provides a general introduction to traditional astrology, so to those types of astrology that were practiced prior to the 20th century. Uh, and specifically, this book excels in particular in medieval and, and to some extent Renaissance astrology. So essentially the types of astrology that were practiced, um, especially, I want to say, between the 12th and the 17th century, that seems to be the primary uh, focus or, or specialization of this book in terms of the, the techniques and the types of traditions that the two authors draw on. Uh, but it's uh, a really good book because uh, not only is it just a book on traditional astrology, but it's actually a really good intro book just in general because they really break down all of the concepts in a really excellent and a really understandable way. Uh, the other thing is that uh, Luis actually has uh, some background in graphic design, so the book is extremely well illustrated in terms of the uh, diagrams and the tables and the other things contained in the book. So I didn't actually count, but it has to have something like a hundred different diagrams and tables in this book. So it's actually very well illustrated in terms of demonstrating different concepts. And they have a way of um, illustrate, illustrating things in a certain style that's very, um, it's very unique, but it's also very clear in conveying the concepts that it event attempts to convey. So this is a highly... Uh, I don't want to say highly because I don't want to oversell it in terms of um, making it seem too complicated. It's definitely going to be a little bit more, uh, it's not just beginner, but it also deals with some intermediate and some advanced concepts. And because it's in traditional astrology, it's a little bit um, more advanced than your basic intro to modern astrology book. But if you're serious about um, the more advanced forms of getting into the more advanced forms of predictive astrology, and especially traditional astrology, then this would definitely be a good book for you. So it was published in 2010. I've heard that they uh, may have already written a revised or a second edition or a follow-up work, 
and I'm actually looking forward to that coming out hopefully sometime in the not too distant future. Uh, but in the meantime, you can get this book uh, on Amazon or through the American Federation of Astrologers, uh, and it's uh, relatively inexpensive. All right, and finally, the final book and my top pick in terms of my top six uh, beginners books on astrology is actually a book titled The Essential Guide to Practical Astrology by April Elliott Kent. So this book actually just came out uh, again a few years ago. So for the most part, I've tended to focus on relatively recent books that have come out over the course of the past decade or so, uh, just because they're a little bit more fresh and a little bit more in keeping with the sort of zeitgeist of the past decade or so and where astrology is at now. Um, this is one of the books, though, that when it came out in 2011, I was actually really impressed by how uh, how clear a presentation of modern astrology it gave, where um, it's actually relatively comprehensive. It's a it's a how many pages? It's a just under 400 page book, but April actually covers a surprising amount of um, stuff in this book. Now it's not quite as comprehensive as something like Parker's Astrology, where it's just this huge tome. But what April's book does really well is that it breaks down just about every part of astrology and makes it um, very approachable and very understandable. So April has a blog and she writes a, a website and she's been doing a website writing for quite a while. And that actually comes through in this book because it's written almost as if it's not a, I don't want to say that it's not a book, but it's written almost more like a blog rather than a book. And that's actually a positive thing because it makes it much easier to read. And she does a very good job in terms of the layout and the design of the book to make things approachable and make it so that you can read through the book relatively quickly and easily. Uh, she also has a very conversational and sometimes sort of lighthearted style that I think is also very useful for an intro to astrology book because you're dealing with what can be some pretty advanced or some pretty heavy techniques and a lot of information to take in. And so sometimes for a beginner, it's better to have a sort of lighter book, which can help you to get through the topic more easily, rather than just like throwing a ton of history and philosophy and techniques and completely overwhelming you. Um, that's the main thing that this book to me does really well, is it presents everything in a very uh, not overwhelming fashion. So it also has a lot of uh, interpretations and delineations of different placements that you can look up in your birth chart. Um, it's not as it doesn't have as many illustrations or diagrams as some of the other books like Parker's Astrology or On the Heavenly Spheres or The Secret Language of Astrology. So it's mainly just text for the most part. Um, but the way that she writes it and breaks everything up, I think it's one of the more approachable, if not the most approachable book on the list, and that's why I put it at the very top of my list of top six beginner astrology books. So originally this was published in 2011 by uh, like an imprint of Penguin, but I think it was re recently republished or reprinted by April herself in 2016. So there's two different cover covers for the book, but the title of both is The Essential Guide to Practical Astrology. So I would recommend checking that out, and you can find the book on Amazon. So that's my list of the top six beginner astrology books. And of course, I recently published my own book, so I would, re I would be amiss if I did not mention my book, which is titled Hellenistic Astrology, The Study of Fate and Fortune. So this is a book on ancient astrology where I tried to write uh, what is essentially the first comprehensive overview of ancient Greco-Roman astrology and the origins of Western astrology about 2,000 years ago. So I cover the history, the philosophy, and the techniques essentially of the type of astrology that was practiced in the Roman Empire, and uh, I cover intermediate, advanced, and uh, beginner concepts. So this book covers the original conceptual premise of the planets, the signs, the houses, and aspects, and then it goes into intermediate concepts, and then eventually it goes into uh, advanced timing techniques such as annual perfections and zodiac releasing.
Uh, there's also a huge, the first several chapters are entirely on the history of astrology in order to explain where the practice comes from and how it was developed in the West. So uh, with this book, I didn't really write it with the intent of beginners reading it, although uh, it's primarily written for people who have a little bit of background in the subject already, but um, I've already had a few beginners read it, and they've actually been able to do it just fine uh, as long as they picked up a sort of primer on modern astrology to read alongside it. So if you wanted to get into ancient astrology, you could read my book, uh, but I would recommend picking up one of the other books on my list uh, because they'll kind of help you in some of those places where I'm talking about something that otherwise I'm taking for granted that you already know. And so that's about it. So you can find out more information about my book uh, at my website, which is uh, hellenisticastrology.com. All right, so that's it for this list. Uh, final thoughts are just that, um, unfortunately, there are some, some books out there with that title. For example, the only astrology book you'll ever need is unfortunately probably the most uh, mis, uh, mis uh, titled book uh, ever published because uh, there's no astrologer I've ever met who's only has one astrology book. But in fact, astrology is something that's such a, a broad, a, a big topic. It's such a diverse study and it's such a huge field of study that it's something where you're going to end up with getting many books on the topic. And in fact, you're probably better off not just getting one of the books on this list. I mean, I, I compiled this list so that if you had to just get one book, I wanted to give you a selection of six that would be really good, but in reality it would be best to get a few of them because the more astrology books that you have, or, or the more widely read you are in different astrology books, the better of an astrologer you'll be eventually once you settle on a specific approach or a settle s uh, specific system. It's a good idea to get a broad overview of the field and what's available as, as quick as you can, as early on in your studies as you can, because once you have a broad overview of the field, then you can decide what specific area or what specific tradition or what, what specific approach you want to specialize in and focus on. So plan on if you're going to pursue astrology as a serious study in the future uh, during the course of your life, you're going to have to plan on uh, reading a lot of astrology books and eventually amassing a small library on the topic, and this is just going to be the start. But hopefully one of these book recommendations will really help you out and help you to give a good sort of orientation on the topic, and especially that fourfold system of planets, signs, houses, and aspects, because that's really the, the, the core or the heart of any astrological chart or any birth chart that you might want to interpret. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. You can find out more information and sign up for one of my online courses at theastrologyschool.com. If you like this video and you want to see more, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.